So, Mr. Chu, please tell us that uh, it seems that Keppel has played a significant part to share Singapore planning experience and bring Singapore capital to urban development outside Singapore, as well as, of course, shipping and other interests. And Keppel has notable projects in China and in Brazil, for example. Can you shed some light on how Keppel has leveraged some of these public-private partnerships in these other nations to contribute to uh, reinventing and sustaining cities? The, the trend is, is there in that uh, people are moving from the countryside to the city. And today's China's urbanization is about 50% compared to 80% in more advanced countries like the uh, US. And we see that because of the pressure of the population on the resources, sustainable development becomes a must, a necessity for China. Singapore has the experience of having a lot of people in a very small piece of land. And uh, over the years, the governments have uh, agreed to do some projects together. I think the first project Singapore did with China is the Suzhou Industrial Park project, where Singapore contributed all the expertise we have gathered over the years of developing uh, industrial park and attracting foreign investments to develop uh, an area. And uh, Keppel was tasked to be the leader in this private consortium that will put up the money. The government put in the software, transfer the planning know-how and the regulatory know-how and the management know-how. and. Uh, this project has been very successful over the years. And if you look at Suzhou uh, Industrial Park today, it is a, a very well uh, developed and uh, lived uh, part of China. Another project came about is this uh, Tianjin uh, project, where the governments uh, of China and Singapore have agreed to, to develop somewhere in China a place whereby it can be a model for a sustainable development, a commercially viable that it can be re uh, replicated in other parts of China. So this place was chosen, uh, was uh, uh, kind of nominated by the Chinese government and uh, the Singapore uh, side agreed. So at the government level, it's a G2G project. At the commercial level, uh, Keppel leads the Singapore Consortium which is a 50-50 partnership with the Chinese uh, SOEs uh, to put in the commercial capital to develop this uh, part of uh, China. It is situated uh, near Tianjin and also near Beijing, but it's in a part of uh, Tianjin which is, uh, was a formerly a salt farm, so it was not used by inhabitants. So the challenge is, of course, uh, the uh, Chinese partner put in the resources to build in the, some of the infrastructures, and the Singapore Consortium uh, was tasked to, to work with the Chinese to develop this project. And it's over 30 uh, square kilometers, with a target uh, population size over time of about 350,000 people. Uh, there will be... Uh, real links between uh, this part of uh, Tianjin with the other part of Tianjin like uh, the, 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 uh, the city centre, the uh, new the industrial area called Tida, as well as the roads to the Beijing airport. It's actually about one and a half hours uh, by road to Beijing airport. So uh, with the infrastructure and the growth of the Tianjin area is growing at double digits over the last 10 years. And uh, even last year was double digit. And because Tianjin is a center whereby uh, many foreign investors go there to have factories building products, not for export, but for the Chinese market. So you, f you find uh, people like Airbus, Toyota, and so on who are there and who build products for the Chinese market. So this eco-city was uh, designed as, as kind of a suburb whereby people can live, work and play, and uh, to support this part. 
And the Chinese party brought in uh, effort. They put in their national animation center adjoining this area so that uh, there is an area for people to work. And uh, by using principles of sustainable development, like uh, a proper land use, a proper uh, areas for green areas, park, uh, more uh, public transport, uh, less cars, and so on, uh, and reusing the water and uh, having a, a better environment, uh, energy conservation and using alternative energy. So there are many, many areas that we are working together with the Chinese partners to develop this. How do we uh, make sure that uh, ultimately we get a return? I think the key really is that uh, the land cost at entry point must be low enough so that uh, you don't have to carry a big burden of the land cost. And ultimately, whatever you put in the infrastructure, the market must be willing to pay the price for. And uh, parcels of land will parcel off and different MNCs were attracted to go in there to jointly develop some of these pieces. And ultimately, uh, we think that over time, uh, this project will pay for itself. So, uh, in Brazil, we do a different thing. In Brazil, we went in, uh, there was a need uh, many years ago, over 12 years ago, for Brazil to have some uh, capacity to build their own platforms for the offshore oil and gas, both for exploration and production. We went there as a private entity, working with uh, private uh, partners in Brazil to lease this piece of uh, old abandoned shipyard to redevelop into a rig building uh, uh, offshore yard. And the government of uh, Rio State, the, our, our customers base, the Petrobras being the key one, as well as the Brazilian gov government welcome us uh, wholeheartedly into that kind of project. So we build up the start and today we have delivered many uh, platforms that, uh, and many other projects that actually went to work. In fact, uh, there is a renewed increased program because of discovery of very deep reservoirs of oil and gas. They call it in the pre-salt area, both offshore Rio de Janeiro and offshore uh, Sao Paulo state. And uh, we see that uh, the future is quite bright for the industry going there on that basis. Thank you. Can I ask you a short follow-up about the Tianjin experience and the Rio experience? Um, I'd like you to, to expand, if you could, on who you negotiate with, in that are you invited in by a government level entity, or is it more that the project is available and you're working with, with private sector partners to bring expertise and capital to bear? As I have uh, said before, the Tianjin project is a G2G project. So the two governments agree and we were invited in by the Tianjin and uh, uh, Beijing authorities. So it's a G2G area. The real project is a private, totally private project. We went in there and uh, we make, we make it as a private investment, it has to pay for itself and it has to work. 